Hello, hello, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to knit a hair scrunchie in a few sizes and textures. I personally was really in love with these projects after I made them because it was a great way for me to stash bust. Uh, here I'm using Filocana Arveta Classic from my stash. It's actually a sock weight yarn and it comes in some very beautiful colors. So here I am playing around with colors and patterns by knitting with two strands held together. So I cast on 64 stitches on a size 6.5 millimeter needle. And it's really important that the needles that you're using, if you can, have something with a really, really short cord. So this one is probably the shortest cord I've ever seen. <laughs> and it's really helpful when you're knitting a smaller scrunchie. Um, the knitted tube, there won't be any runs in it. Big gaps in the fabric. Knitting with two strands together allows me to knit with these chunkier needles, which is really great and makes progress very fast. And I also really love how these colors mix together. They are so beautiful, the orange and the purple. This color combination is something that I've been so into these days. It just creates a fun like marble texture, uh, maybe even kind of like tie dyed. And if you mixed even more colors together, it would definitely have a tie dye effect. We're basically just making one large knit tube. This one I knit measured about 10 centimeters long and that's where I decided to stop and join the tube together. I cut out a nine inch strand of elastic and simply tied it together in a knot. You could alternatively sew this together, hand sew it or sew it with a machine but I find that the knot actually works really well. So if you don't have a machine or you don't have sewing skills, it's perfectly fine. And with this scrunchie, what I did actually was take the knitted tube and put the elastic around the tube to be able to then join the two sides of the knitted tube. I'm basically taking the cast on edge and knitting that together with my active stitches on my needle. And one thing I actually won't recommend is doing this with the elastic already wrapped around because you can even see it's not staying. <laughs> it wasn't staying around the knitted tube very well and I had to continually adjust so that was very distracting. So for the next scrunchies that I did. The better method, in my opinion, is to yeah, knit the circular tube for the scrunchie and then uh, feed the elastic in afterwards. And this is how the scrunchie turned out. For the next scrunchie, I decided to try two different types of yarn held together. So this one is another one of the Filocana Arveta Classic uh, sock yarns, the, the blue. And then I also paired it with a strand of mohair from a, a project just left over. Um, I really liked how this gave it a soft, like fluffy kind of, um, yeah, a nice soft fluffy texture. And for this one, I actually knit it a little bit shorter than the first scrunchie. The first scrunchie, I definitely made it a bit uh, longer. And for this one, I think I only did about seven centimeters. And I also wanted to see how the purl side of the stockinette stitch would work with the scrunchie. So instead of putting wrong sides together when I was uh, knitting the tube, the circular tube, I instead put right sides together. So the stockinette side was facing and I was casting off with the purl side showing. Here's a better visual of how I went about making the circular tube. So what I did was identify the stitches on the cast on edge of the circular tube. And then from there, I was taking those cast on edges and slipping them onto the working needle to then knit two together. Mm -hmm. 
So identifying that edge, then slipping it onto my right needle and knitting the next two stitches together. And then from there, I would cast off one stitch by lifting the first stitch on my right needle over and off the needles. So again, identifying that stitch, slipping it on the left, knitting two together, and then casting off one stitch from my right needle by lifting that first stitch over and off. So continue doing that until you have a small opening on your circular knit tube and then put in the elastic and tie a knot at the end. This is much easier than doing this beforehand and then casting off around the elastic because then you can just sew up the small opening that you left available with um, a darning needle and then cut off any of the loose ends. It's just so much easier and then you have a nice crunchy. I also did some experiments with different patterns. Honestly, you can go crazy with this with textures, patterns, whatever you like. I really liked this checkerboard print. I thought it was a lot of fun, um, but really you can get creative with this same stitch count and length. And finally, we're gonna go into the steps on how to knit this giant scrunchie right here. I have the written instructions available on my Etsy if you would like to support me over there, but essentially the process is the same except this time we will use five and a half millimeter needles and two strands of mohair. You're gonna to wanna to cast on stitches and knit in the round until you have a circular tube that's about 35 inches by nine inches. And then we are going to be in a place where we can fold over our knitted piece and create another circular tube like we did before. Again, I just wanna show this so that it's absolutely clear what you do. We're going to join both sides. So the cast on edge, we identify the next stitch and slip that on the left needle, then knit the next two stitches together and then cast off the next stitch. You should always have one stitch on your right needle. So identifying that stitch, slipping it onto the left needle, knitting the next two stitches together and then casting off one stitch. And you'll continue doing that until you have a small opening again. Uh, I would say you don't need anything more than about five stitches left on your needle. And then you'll be able to cast those stitches off and feed in the elastic. Again, taking a paper clip and attaching that to the elastic makes it really easy to feed it through. This is going to be a longer process than the other scrunchies where we have a lot of fabric to get through. So that paper clip will definitely come in handy. And once you've fed the entire elastic through, just tie a knot on both ends and then get your darning needle out and do a horizontal seaming technique to stitch up the last bit of that opening and make it have a nice professional finish. And here is the finished scrunchie. The first thing I would say about all of these projects is that I had a lot of fun with every single one. It's just fun to really get creative and mix different fibers together to come out with really cool textures and color combinations. Very quick, I mean, these are perfect summer knits, perfect weekend knits. Honestly, most of these I did in a day. The giant scrunchie obviously took a little bit longer because I was using thinner needles and it's obviously much larger <laughs> in comparison to this one, which probably took me two hours. If that, I was kind of just uh, going off and on. Uh, so obviously comparing the two, this one took more time. Um, but I love them both equally. Um, the color combination that I love the most, well, this one is just beautiful. I love this um, color, this cobalt blue, so gorgeous. Um, but mixing the colors together, I would say that this one is my favorite, the pink or no, the purple and orange color combination. I really love. Um, and I just love mixing different types of fibers together different colors together to create these 
really fun combinations. Uh, and this one has a different texture because I added one strand of mohair and one strand of sock weight wool. And it's just a little fuzzy and a little, uh, yeah, just crazy. And the pearl side of this gives a nice texture too. Whereas the stockinette, you can see that it, it offers like a different type of texture, a different type of pattern. And one thing that I didn't really show you too much on film was this scrunchie right here. Uh, I decided to take um, what I learned from this one <laughs> and do a little bit of a mixture between a whitish gray and lime green. And then on one side I did, yeah, just the mix of the two. So knitting with two strands held together. And then on the other side, I went for more of like a checkered pattern, you know, just a little bit different trying to see like how it would look with different kinds of patterns and so on. Uh, I definitely like this one. This one's really cool. I think my favorite though has got to be the giant scrunchie just because of the wow factor, because it's just so outrageous. Um, and it's really soft too. So I really like just knitting with the mohair. The mohair made it really soft, whereas here next to with mohair and wool, it's a little, it's still soft, but it's, um, I don't know, maybe it does look just a little messy. In comparison to this one, I think it looks very luxurious. So the mohair definitely gives it a more luxurious feel to it and look as well. Very easy project, very simple, not very difficult, quick to do, a lot of fun. You can get very creative with this and yeah, just have a lot of fun and stash bust, which is so important because we need to use the yarn that's in our stash already before we invite new yarn into our lives, at least in my opinion. And I actually really like how all of these look together. They're, um, they're pretty nice. I, I chose a good color palette, I think, for these projects, so yeah. I'm really excited with how it turned out. I definitely think I will be making more because why not, you know? <laughs> it's just so quick, so easy. Um, and I'm one of those people that really does love having um, just a project on the side that makes me feel like I'm getting a lot of progress done because I am very goal oriented in that way. I want to finish projects. So um, knitting up hair accessories is a way to feel that accomplishment, that sense of accomplishment. Obviously, uh, all the steps to make these have been included in this video, but I have also put a pattern over on Etsy for this giant scrunchie if, in case you want the written instructions there. So, um, of course, it's completely optional because you have the instructions here, but if you want to go and support me over on uh, Etsy, I would really appreciate it. It definitely helps me out and enables me to make more content like this. So uh, yeah, if you would do that, that would be amazing. So thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll talk again real soon. Bye.